Hello and welcome back. Today we've got a very exciting tutorial, user permissions and policies in IIM or Identity Access Management. Let's have a look. So here is our AWS account and let's say we have a user named Rick who needs read-only access to S3 or the simple storage service. Now what we can do is we can go and look through the available policies uh, that are managed by AWS and we'll find one which allows S3 read-only access and all we need to do from there is attach that policy to Rick's profile and Rick will have that read-only access. Now let's say there's another user named Mary and both Rick and Mary need access to the EC2 service, full access. So again we will go into the repository of uh, all uh, policies available in AWS, we will find one called allow EC2 and we will attach it to both Mary and Rick and they will both have that desired access. Now I wanted to use this example to illustrate that managed policies um, are, you can attach them to multiple uh, users uh, like we did here in the case with Mary and Rick. Now let's say there's another user called Cleo and Cleo needs uh, full access to S3 but Cleo shouldn't be able to see a specific bucket called the secret bucket. Now we haven't spoken much about S3 yet, the simple storage service will definitely cover it off uh, further down in the course and we'll learn what buckets actually are. But for now, just imagine bucket as a folder. So basically, Cleo needs access to all uh, S3, all of the folders except for this one specific folder called the secret bucket. Now, if we go through uh, the AWS managed policies or the policies provided by AWS, we won't find one specifically for this use case because the secret bucket is something that we created. It's very unique to our account and uh, AWS. It's, it's just a very specific use case that AWS doesn't uh, cover because of this name secret bucket. So we're going to have to create our own policy and we'll go ahead and create a managed uh, customer managed policy which will allow S3 and deny that specific uh, bucket that we want to deny. So all of these policies we've discussed so far are called managed policies. The first two were managed by AWS, so they're created and maintained by AWS. You can look through them, there's lots of them there and you can pick out the one that works for you. And if you don't find one there, you can create a custom managed policy and you can um, uh, code it like you want and then attach it to the users that you want. Now, let's look at another kind of policy and to and make this more interesting. Let's say that uh, the situation has changed. Now Rick no longer needs any sort of access to S3. They shouldn't have access to S3 at all. So what we can do is we can simply remove the attached uh, policy over here. We can just remove this policy. Uh, but for to make this more interesting, we're going to actually attach another policy to Rick. And this, guy, this time we'll attach an inline policy. So an inline policy is different to a managed policy in the sense that this policy can only be attached to one user. It's attached directly into their user profile and it can then be attached to any other user. Uh, but apart from that, it's, it's, uh, it works exactly the same way. So um, here we're attaching this inline policy to Rick and what it's doing is it's denying access to S3. And here we'll see an interesting thing. So we'll see a, we see a situation where Rick has two policies attached. One allows S3 read-only access and one denies uh, S3 access. So what will win, the allow or the deny? And this is where the uh, policy evaluation logic is important. So here we've got policy evaluation logic. Uh, always you will have an implicit deny by default. So everything is denied unless it's explicitly allowed. Then once there is allow, an explicit allow like we had initially, or in this case, Mary uh, wouldn't uh, normally have access to uh, EC2 by default, but because there's an explicit allow attached to her profile, she has access to EC2. So an explicit allow overrides the implicit or default deny. But then if there is an explicit deny anywhere, even one explicit deny is attached to this profile. So like in this case, there's an allow, but there's also an explicit deny. An explicit deny will always override uh, the explicit allows. So even if there's five explicit allows and one explicit deny for S3 through different policies, the explicit deny will override all of them. So one explicit deny is sufficient to override all explicit allows. Something to keep in mind, this policy evaluation logic is important. So moving on, uh, so we've talked about that. Let's look at a specific policy in action. 
So here is our policy that we want to create, and this is what it looks like. And we're going to go through this line by line. The first statement, the first line is the version of the policy language. It's pretty much always going to be the same 2012, 10, 17. Next is the uh, permission, the statement that will define the permissions. And it has two parts. The first uh, part will be allowing S3 access. So this is a unique identifier, it's optional. Then the effect of this part is to allow. Allow what? Well, allow all S3 related actions and allow where on all S3 resources. And then the second part is um, to deny that bucket. So here we have uh, an optional unique identifier. Then we have an effect, which is deny. Deny what? All S3 related actions. So this asterisk after S3 is, is a wild card. It means all any kind of actions that relate to S3. And um, deny where? Deny uh, firstly on the bucket itself. So you can't make any changes to the bucket itself. And secondly, to uh, on any of the contents inside the bucket. So you can't view anything that's inside the bucket or you can't um, put in anything inside the bucket. You can't edit anything inside the bucket and so on. So there we go. That's what an IAM policy looks like inside. As you can see, it's quite logical and straightforward. On that note, uh, here's a quick summary of everything that we discussed. Uh, uh, remember, uh, for the exam, it's very important to keep in mind the explicit deny, explicit allow, implicit deny uh, policy evaluation logic. And in general, you want to be giving users the least permissions that they may need. So that's a general rule of thumb in AWS. Follow the principle of least privilege so that they only get the permissions they actually need and not more than that. Um, on that note, I look forward to seeing you back here next time. And until then, enjoy the cloud.